So uh, where are the robots? We've been uh, told for 40 years already that they're coming soon. Very soon they will uh, be doing everything for us. They'll be cooking, cleaning, uh, buying things, shopping, building, but uh, they aren't here. Meanwhile, we have uh, uh, illegal immigrants doing all the work, but uh, we don't have any robots. So what can we, uh, what can we do about that? What can we uh, say? So I, I want to uh, give a, a little bit of a different perspective of what uh, we can uh, um, how we can perhaps look at these things in a little bit of a different way. And this is an x-ray picture of a real beetle and a, and a Swiss watch back from 88. Uh, you look at that, and it's what was true then is certainly true today. We can still make the pieces. We can make the right uh, pieces. We can make the circuitry with the right computational power. But we can't actually put them together to make something that will actually work and be as adaptive as these uh, systems. So let's try to look at it from a different perspective. Let's summon the, the, the best designer, the mother of all designers. Let's, let's see what evolution can do for, for us. So we threw in, a, uh, we created a primordial soup with lots of uh, pieces of robots, with bars, with motors, with neurons, put them all together and put all this under kind of natural selection, under mutation, and rewarded things for how well they can move forward. Very simple task. And it's interesting to see what kind of things uh, came out of that. So if you look, you can see a lot of different uh, machines come out of this. They all move around. They all crawl in different ways. And uh, you can see on the right that uh, we actually made a couple of these things, and they work in reality. These are not very fantastic robots, but they evolved to do exactly what we reward them for, for moving forward. So that was all done in simulation. But uh, we can also do that on real machines. Here's a, is a physical uh, robot that we actually uh, have a population of brains uh, competing or evolving on the machine. It's like a rodeo show. They all get a ride on the machine, and they get rewarded for how, uh, how fast or how far they can make the machine move forward. And you can see these robots are not ready to take over the world yet. But you can, uh, they gradually learn how to uh, move forward, and they do this uh, uh, autonomously. So in these two examples, we had basically a machine, machines that learned how to work in simulation, and also machines that learned how to work in reality. But I want to show you a different approach. And this is this robot over here, uh, which um, has four legs. It has eight motors, uh, four in the knees and four in the hip. It has also two tilt sensors that tell the machine how it, uh, uh, which way it's tilting. Uh, but this machine doesn't l uh, know what it looks like. You look at it and you see it has four legs. The machine doesn't know if it's a snake, if it's a tree. It doesn't have any idea what it looks like. But it's going to try to find that out. So initially, it does some random motion. Uh, and it, then it tries to figure out what it might look like. And you're seeing a lot of things passing through its minds. A lot of self-models that try to explain the relationship between actuation and sensing, and then tries to do a second action that creates the most disagreement among predictions of these alternative models, like a scientist in a lab. Then it does that and tries to uh, explain that and prune out its self-models. This is already the last cycle, and you can see it's pretty much figured out what itself uh, looks like. And once it has a self-model, it can use that to uh, derive a pattern of locomotion. So what you're seeing here are a couple of uh, machine, uh, a pattern of locomotion. We were hoping that it's going to have a kind of uh, evil spidery walk, but instead it created this uh, pretty lame way of moving forward. But when you look at that, you have to remember that this machine uh, did not do any physical trials on how to move forward, nor did it have a model of itself. It kind of figured out what it looks like and how to move forward and then, uh, uh, then uh, actually try that uh, out. So uh, we'll move forward to a different idea. So that was uh, what happened when we had um, a couple of, uh, that's what happened when you had a couple of, uh, OK, OK, OK. okay. <laughs> they don't like each other. So here's another, there's a, a different robot. Uh, they, 
That, that's what happens when the robots uh, actually are rewarded for doing something. But what happens if you don't reward them for anything? You just throw them in. So we have these cubes, uh, like the diagram showed here, the cube can swivel or flip on its side, and we just throw a thousand of these uh, cubes into a soup. This is in simulation, and don't reward them for anything. We just let them flip. Uh, we put pump energy into this and see what happens in a couple of mutations. So initially nothing happens, they're just flipping around there. Uh, but after uh, a very short while, you can see these uh, blue things on the right there uh, begin to take over. They begin to self-replicate. So in absence of any reward, the intrinsic reward is self-replication. And we've actually built a couple of these, and this is part of a larger robot made out of these cubes. This is an accelerated view where you can see the robot actually carrying out some of this replication process. So you feed it in with more material, cubes in this case, and more energy, and it can make another robot. So of course, this is a very crude machine, but uh, we're working on micro-scale version of these, and hopefully the cubes will be like a powder that you pour in. Okay, so what, uh, what can we learn? These robots are, of course, uh, um, not very useful in themselves, but uh, they might teach us something about how uh, we can build better robots and how uh, perhaps how humans, animals, create self-models and learn. And one of the things that I think is important is that we have to get away from this idea of designing the machines manually, but actually let them evolve and learn like children. And perhaps that's the way we'll get there. Thank you.